Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. <laughs> I'm kidding. This is actually the uh, longbow channel. Well, for those of you who are new to this channel, uh, this is one of my favorite longbows. It's made out of uh, elm and uh, wenge. There's a nice piece of little walnut uh, detail in here. And uh, it took me about a month to build. But uh, this video isn't really about bows. See, I've been watching a ton of Herr Jorg Sprava's uh, slingshot channel, and uh, man, I've probably watched at least 200 of his videos. And dang it, those uh, slingshots, they look like a lot of fun. So I'm going to build a few of them, probably three or so, and I'd like. Uh, like you to join me if you're interested in watching the building process. You might learn a thing or two. So I find one of the best ways to teach... Wait. One of the best ways to learn is to teach. So, even though I'm a noob at this, I'm going to show you what little bit I know. Okay, so, welcome to my dungeon. I'm going to be making three uh, boomerangs in this video. Uh, sorry. I'm going to be making three slingshots in this video. And the first one I'm going to make is uh, out of this solid piece of paduke and as I've said before in some other videos I love this wood I love the way it catches the light in order to make this this just started out as a big rectangular block and I folded a piece of paper in half and just drew a little template on it and I just traced that onto here and cut it out on my bandsaw one of my boomerangs I'm going to be keeping a secret until the end of the video but uh, this is the template for it and the other uh, boomerang, I keep calling them boomerangs, slingshot is going to be built up from all these different pieces of wood. This here is purple heart. It's extremely hard. Got this brown piece of veneer. I don't know what kind of wood it is, but it looks pretty. Uh, next we've got a piece of ebony. And another piece of the brown veneer. A piece of maple. Now the grain on this piece of purple heart here, it runs like this, and the grain in the maple runs like this. So this is pretty much going to be like a giant piece of plywood. And on the other side, it's a mirror of the last side I showed you. Another piece of that brown wood, another piece of ebony, another piece of brown wood, and sandwiching on a piece of purple heart on top to finish it all off. So I'm going to try to glue all of these together at once. I've got some white glue in this container here. And I'm just gonna paint it on with this here paintbrush. So I'll take my first piece. I should get something so I don't make a mess. Alright. So I'm just gonna take some of this here white glue. Paint it on the first piece. I don't want a ton, but enough to uh, say the entire surface is wet and covered with glue. Okay, so that part's done, so I'm going to take my first piece of veneer and lay that on top. And apply glue to that. glued, take my other piece of veneer, the ebony, lay that gingerly atop the brown stuff, just lightly press it in place, apply glue, Now the ebony is covered in glue, I'll take the piece of brown wood here, slap it on there. Get more glue. And now we're halfway there. 
Take the piece of maple. Slap it on. Running out of glue. Another piece of veneer. of ebony. The brown stuff. Almost done. Oh, we are done. Well, look at that. Okay, now that they're all together, I'm just going to try to line them up a little bit better. And I'll apply clamps to this. I like to start with one clamp in the center, and that'll push the glue out from the center to the, towards the sides. And then I'll just put one at each corner. squeeze out there. Now I'll just let this sit for 20 minutes while I clean off my paintbrushes and uh, we'll take the next step from there. Well through the magic of television it's been several hours now since uh, I clamped this thing together so it's pretty much ready to be disassembled. So I'll do that now. I just got to clean up these edges in the workshop. We'll focus now on uh, just trimming the nasty edges off of this piece of wood to make it look clean. Even though there's some, still some undried glue here, the stuff in, in the wood is much drier. So my uh, block of wood is now complete here, and 
And from this, I'll carve my boomerang. So how I'm going to proceed is I'm going to draw a template for this on a piece of paper. So I'll just place the block on there. And trace its outline. That'll give me the size of my template. I'll just cut that out. Now I'll just fold that in half down its axis. So I just draw one half of the boomerang on this side, and when I flip it over, it'll be symmetrical. Now this boomerang, I'm going to be uh, using a different kind of rubber. Uh, like for most of, or for my other two boomerangs, I'm using this stuff. This is known as uh, blue theraband. It's extremely thin and quite stretchy. But on this one, I want to use this, which is a gigantic rubber band. It was about 8 feet in diameter. It's not as stretchy as the TheraBand, but it takes a lot of strength to pull it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to put this on here. I know that piece has to be at least that wide to accommodate the band. I want this thing to be rather simple. It'll be kind of a straight cylinder type deal across the fork. Curve it inward a bit, I suppose. A little indent for the uh, palm here. And there's the handle. That's about it. Pull that back in half and I'll cut it out now. Now that I unfold it, there's my uh, little slingshot template. I'll just trace that onto here and we'll be ready to cut it again on the bandsaw. Now traced on there, I don't know if you can see it, but I can. So now I'll go uh, cut this out, and uh, we'll continue on with the next step. Okay, well, this puppy's cut out now. Doesn't look like very much yet, but uh, it's well on its way to becoming a nice little slingshot. I had tried uh, carving it with the old uh, utility knife here, but the stuff is so darn hard I can hardly make any headway. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll uh, do my initial rough shaping with uh, this rasp. And uh, I'll just go to town on it. Much uh, raspy uh, rasping of this piece of wood here, and also using a, a utility knife, I've managed to get it somewhat uh, decent looking. So I've rounded that face off. That's the side my palm will be grabbing onto when it's finished. And on this side, I went with a little bit of artistic flair and kind of continued this curve on the top of the boomerang here. Uh, I keep calling them boomerangs, it's a slingshot. I continue to itch down the front face of it. Uh, now at this point, what I want to do is, uh, right here, I want to make a little hole, like a divot, 
and that'll be a, a place for my this little flap of skin here to fit into. And that's called a, a palm swell, and it helps you to, to grip it a bit more firmly with the palm of your hand. So I'm just gonna normally I would do this kind of thing with the this rat tail file just to start the process off and then I'd finish it up with uh, this half round file. Let's see, one round side is round, the other flat. Very handy. But because this purple heart is incredibly hard, it's, uh, I swear, it's harder than, harder than aluminum. Uh, because it's so hard, I'm gonna cut out my finger grips and my palm swell uh, out on the bandsaw just to save myself some time. So, let's see if you can see this. I'm going to be cutting out a section of wood pretty much along that line up into about here. These aren't perfectly straight lines and it's kind of on the side profile. Let's get some light on here. It'll be something, something like that. It'll dig into the wood that much. Now for the finger grips, I have a little technique I've learned. Uh, you just grasp it uh, as you would. Um, basically what I'm going to do is, uh, at this point where my bottom finger uh, crosses the wood, I should say, just draw a little bit of a line there. Lift that finger off. Draw a little bit of a line on the next finger. You're basically just tracing your hand onto the piece of wood here. Onto the next finger. And the last finger. probably get some ink on yourself, but you end up with these lines, and those lines tell you where you have to cut your grooves out. And when you're making um, finger grips, you kind of try to make them match the profile of your hand. Like, you, you want to match the angle of your the, the joints of your fingers. So that's the angle that you want to carve into the, the slingshot. The next joint runs at an angle like this, so you, that's the angle you want to carve at, and the next joint of my finger runs at an angle like that. And that's how you make pretty pretty much a, a perfect form-fitting uh, hand grip with both the palm swell and finger grips. So I'm going to cheat right now and use the bandsaw to do that because I'm lazy and I'm tired of carving this thing because my arm hurts. And we'll so oh, here we go. Palm swell. Finally, I'll do the third joint of my finger. <laughs> 
go. Looks pretty rough at this point, but uh, I think you get the idea. Now I just gotta finish this off with uh, my other two files and then I can proceed to sandpaper. So here the thing is, uh, fresh off the bandsaw, or not so fresh off the bandsaw. But uh, what I'm trying to do now is, you see these uh, sharp valleys that I've just dug into it? I want to round them off so that they eventually look like this one does here. Whoop, see there? Rounded that off with the, a rat tail file so it's nice and smooth on the bottom. Whoop. I've also done it to the top there. Just smooth it out a little bit. So I have to do uh, that rounding process on these last two grooves here. This one here is not yet done, so we'll go at it. Might be easier if I go the other way around. With any other wood, I would have been done a long time ago. But this stuff's so ridiculously hard, it takes a lot of work to get any progress done. See, there's no more sharp groove there. It's all nice and smooth at the bottom. Bits to work on here, I'll be using the rat tail file. And the next bit after that will be widening the grooves with the half round file. And that will take care of all the, instead of working on the valleys, the, the half round file will be working on the, the peaks here, the, the sharp pointy bits. Hi, Cody. So, I've now uh, finished digging all the little grooves out with my rat tail file. And now I've switched to the half round file to, uh, to finish it off. And that gets rid of the big, uh, thick, jagged areas here. It makes nice, uh, sharp breaks in between the depressions. And it fits my hand very nicely. Well, not so nicely down here yet, because my pinky can't fit in the hole, but we're getting there. So I got, uh, this section to sand, and this section. Or not sand, but file. And then I can move on to my sanding regimen. And these are the, the sandpapers I'll be using. This one's, uh, well, the file here is roughly about a 60 grit. So to eliminate the marks from that, I'll be using uh, 100 grit sandpaper. And to eliminate the marks from that, I'll be using 220 grit sandpaper. To eliminate the marks that that makes, I'll be using 400 grit sandpaper. And to eliminate the marks that that makes, I'll be using this uh, quadruple z uh, steel wool. This is the finest kind of steel wool you can get. It's very soft and fluffy. You don't need to watch me sanding, do you? No? Great. The next step after the, the sanding will be varnish. So, I know I said that I was going to be making three boomerangs in this video, but I lied. I'm going to make four! Uh, all the ones I've built up until now have been rather uh, labor-intensive, and you need a lot of tools to put them together. But they're rather cheap. It cost maybe from like 10 to 30 dollars for the various ones that I've built so far. But I wanted to see if I could come up with one that requires no tools. And I managed to design one. Uh, the drawback is that it's rather expensive. What I'm using are these brass uh, fittings here. I've got uh, two pipe caps. That's going to be the uh, fork tips. Let's see, the forks themselves are going to be made with these hose adapters. The junction between the two forks will be this big hose adapter here. So yeah, it's a Y. I got uh, yet another hose adapter to connect uh, this hose adapter to the handle, which is right here. It's a brass nipple. 
Oh, and I'm also going to be using this valve here. So the grand total of the cost of these things is... Okay, so here's how it goes together. I take my pipe cap and this hose adapter. Cap goes on like so. Do the same with the other pipe cap and hose adapter. Then you take the pipe cap hose adapter assembly and you put it on the T. That's one fork. And two forks. I got an O-ring inside this one, so I'm going to be removing that. And now that we've got the, uh, whoop, the O-ring out of there, I'll take this third uh, hose adapter here and stick it in there. That reduces the diameter of that opening to uh, half an inch. Now that that's in there, I can take my nipple and thread it in there. And the final piece is this valve. Get on there. Alright. Now my tool-free slingshot is complete. It's built like a brick shit house and without any tools whatsoever. But since I do have tools, I'm not going to let this sit as it is. I'm going to solder it together with this uh, pure silver wire here. Because I don't want to... Uh, I'm going to be handling it with my bare hands and I don't want to get lead on my hands, so this is a lot safer than lead. Well, this is an optional, optional step. You don't have to do this because hand tightening that thing is strong, strong enough that it won't come apart, but I'm... Like fire. Molten metal and stuff. It's good fun. Gee, I hope that doesn't crack the table with the heat. Because <laughs> I can't pick it up. Oh, I know. There, one indestructible slingshot. And of course, the last step is to attach the valve at the bottom here. Instead of uh, soldering this one, I'm using this uh, Gorilla Glue, Super Glue. Because there's a piece of plastic inside this valve and I don't want to melt that accidentally. Let me make sure I have that the right way. So I just thread that on. And 
and my brass slingshot is complete. Now I know you're all probably asking, but Longbow, why do you have this stupid valve on the bottom? There's a very good reason. So if that valve wasn't on there, I wouldn't be able to get my ammo out of this thing. Hold around 35 of these little balls. And to close it back up, just put it back into the closed position. Neat, huh? Okay, so the final thing I have to do is I have to make a pouch for these things. And a band set. Here's a, my band set for one of them. It's the blue TheraBand and nice little leather pouch there. Here's the heavy duty band set for the purple one, the purple art one. It's made of uh, this gigantic rubber band I found. You can see how thick it is in comparison to the uh, the TheraBand, which is incredibly, it's like paper thin. And yeah, this is the, the final one. It's longer than the other TheraBand one. So how we go about making these is we start with the pouch itself, and that's a piece of leather. So I'm just going to fold this in half so I get two nice little even sized rectangles. And I'll taper the edges. So it's two layers thick. The second step will be to uh, punch out a hole in the center. You want that hole to be slightly bigger than the, or smaller, I should say, than the diameter of the ammunition you want to shoot. I got this uh, 9.5 millimeter ball here that serves as my ammo. So I want the, the hole to be maybe 7 millimeters. I'll just expand it a little bit. And I'll need two holes on each corner for the rubber bands to go through. One down. And the other. So that's my pouch. Now, I'll need some rubber to attach to this pouch. For this one, I'll be using TheraBand. I'm going to make it uh, 12 inches long. Okay, so my 12 inch long bands are going to be 2 inches wide at one side, and they're going to be 4 inches wide at the other side. Okay, well I've decided I'm going to forego using this uh, cutting mat because it's not working out for me. Uh, so I've instead, I just drew a little line here at the 2 inch mark and another one over here. I'll just place my straight edge there. My trusty X-Acto blade. There, I've got a nice set of tapered bands. This will be the side the, the pouch attaches to, the 2-inch side, and the 4-inch side will attach to the slingshot. And uh, I'm not just going to use one layer, but two. Line them up nicely. And then you want to roll this end up rather tightly. So it looks kind of like that. Then you take that and you force it through the hole. It's going to be a very tight fit. I just like to have about maybe a centimeter of it sticking out past the, uh, the leather. Oh, I gotta attach my other one.
Okay, well, there's a couple of ways to attach your band to your uh, your rubber here. And uh, the method I like is the shoestring method. You just have a little loop of string and that helps you to uh, put it together. So what I do is take the rubber here and I like to put it just underneath the pouch. And I take the little bit that's extrude uh, sticking out on the end and fold it over so that it squeezes the little rubber strip here. Then you pull this tightly and you proceed to wrap it around the pouch while keeping it as tight as possible the whole time. Like you want to really stretch this thing. I'd like to go around, I don't know, about eight times because I'm not too sure of my abilities yet. Okay, I think that's enough. Now, to finally secure it, I'll take my shoestring, just put it on there like so, and wrap around it two times. It's one. And two. Now on the third pass, you take your rubber and you stick it in the loop of the shoestring. Like so. Now still holding that tightly, you pull on the shoestring and you pull that little chunk of rubber through. And once you get near the end, you kind of pull it thusly. I'll just snip this excess bit off here. Try to pull it through. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but uh, that is now secured to my rubber, and it's not coming undone. So now I do the same on the other side. Okay, so I want to attach my band set to this one now. As you can see, I've uh, taken a little TheraBand and I just wrapped it around where the threads are because I um, was a little concerned that the threads are going to slice through the band set. So, I'll take my band set that I've uh, folded the end in half twice so it's, it accommodates this. I'll just place it on there. Now I'll take this little section of rubber band. I could use TheraBand to attach this, but this works too. I'll just pull it very tightly. That's one. Two. Three. And four. I'm going to take my shoestring, put it on there. <coughs> Again, pull it very tightly. Once. And twice. I'll take the end. Pass it through the loop. And I'll pull the loop through. Trim it right there. 
and that's excess. Okay, so I've got one side attached now. So my slingshots are now done. Uh, this guy is my slingshot made of brass pipe fittings. And I've got a nice uh, long band set on there. It's uh, 12 inches long for butterfly shooting. And uh, this one I call the brastardization. And this is the one that you saw me building. Made of uh, purple heart on that side. Got maple in the middle. Purple heart on the back. And uh, this orange wood that I couldn't, or the redwood here you see, that I couldn't recall what its name was, it's actually redwood. And of course the thin little strip of ebony in the, in the middle there. And this one uh, has the same name as my crossbow. I call it the Purple Hurt. So it's very, uh, very low in the hand. For uh, less wrist strain, the forks are close together. And that makes the bands impart more of their energy in the direction of travel. Turned out quite well, I think. As you can see, it's got a nice palm swell on the back to help uh, grip it. And here, this little bad boy is made of paduk. This is one of my favorite kinds of wood. So I love the way it catches the light and iridesces. It's got a very uh, thin uh, I don't know what you call that part. Well, I guess it's part of the arms. It's quite thin. About a centimeter or so at this point. Man, I love this wood. I can't get over it. This one, I wanted to call it the Hammerhead, but somebody already picked that name for a slingshot, and I didn't think that would be right. So instead, I am going to call it the Dead Eye. And as promised, I've got a secret slingshot I've been kind of saving. And here it is. It's made of uh, <clears throat> uh, Russian birch plywood on the back. There's a half an inch of it there. It's also got Russian birch on the front, and I've dyed the wood uh, with some uh, Cabernet stain. Because it sounds so fancy. And whoop, as you can see, it's got some metal in here. I've got three pieces of 1 8 th uh, thick aluminum plate and two pieces of polycarbonate. And a neat thing about this one is it's transparent. Is that funky or what? And it's strong as heck. Uh, this polycarbonate here is supposed to be, uh, what is it, 250 times stronger than glass. So this thing's not going to break. And one thing I like about this is uh, the back end of it, it kind of makes it a little smiley face. Whee! Oh, and this one? It's called the God Slayer. So over there I've set up a, a little catch sheet. And uh, it wasn't too hard to build. I just uh, kind of sewed a little pocket along the bottom there. And it's supported by a little shovel. And uh, anything fired at this should uh, bounce off the sheet and land in the pocket. Kind of like that. That was my wallet. And right there, I'm going to set some targets up along there. And over here, my little table and line I'll be shooting from. This is about uh, seven meters away from the, the target. And here are all my slingshots with all the bands attached. See, I've got a short band set on uh, the Paduke one. So it's, uh, it's more meant to look pretty than anything else. That's just standard bands. Got this ridiculous uh, experimental band set here. Made of extremely thick uh, rubber bands for the Purple Hurt. See, I've attached them with uh, more green rubber. This guy, it's attached with uh, Sarah Band. That one attached with the uh, rubber bands. And here the final one is the God Slayer. 
and uh, it's attached with the TheraBand here. And instead of using a leather pouch, this one I've decided to try weaving a little pouch out of this neon rope. I think that looks pretty well. Should be interesting to see. And the ammunition I'll be using are these uh, 9.5 millimeter steel balls. It's 150 of them. And also these uh, 14 millimeter glass marbles. 149 there. All right. So which one to shoot first? Let's go with the uh, dead eye. Well, I just tried test firing this thing, and as you can see, my band snapped. Now, I think I know the reason for this is, uh, well, it's a learning curve, right? Uh, what I did was I used this X-Acto blade to uh, cut my TheraBand, and that doesn't really give you a clean edge. You need uh, a perfectly smooth edge, because if you try to stretch a jagged edge with a bunch of little jagged bumps in it, one of those jagged pieces is going to snap. So, it's essential that you get one of these rotary cutters. That will make a perfectly smooth edge, and I won't run into this stupid problem. So now I gotta go and buy some more TheraBand, and make this band set again. Well, I went out and bought some new TheraBand, and I've built a, a new band set for my uh, Deadeye slingshot. Unfortunately, the uh, distributor I get it from ran out of TheraBand Blue, but uh, fortunately for me, they uh, got a new shipment of TheraBand Black, which is even stronger. So. I think it's a win-win situation. We're ready to rock and roll. Safety first. You might be wondering about the glove, but uh, here on the longbow channel, we're a bunch of pussies, and I don't want to hurt my hand. So, uh, yeah, I'll be wearing a glove. Now, if I could just think of something to use as a target. That'll do. Well, now that I've got something to shoot at, uh, this is going to work out nicely. See, the idea here is I'm going to be aiming for this Polish beer in the in the middle, and I'll be trying to avoid the uh, the German beers on the side. Both of these countries know how to make fantastic beer. I I got to tell you. So we got the old dead eye here. Now this will be the first time in my life that I've ever tried to shoot a slingshot and actually hit something. So, uh, wish me luck. I'll be shooting the 14mm uh, marble. Polish beer in the middle. Ooh, close. Went way over with that one. Next, I'll try to fire the purple hurt with its ridiculous band set. This band set is so strong, I'm going to be going with the, uh, the fist grip instead of the pinch grip. This is uh, invented by a guy named Tobias, I think. Anyway, we'll give this a shot. What the hell? It landed like right next to me. Something wrong with this. I shoot it that way, and then right next to me on my left. This will be attempt number three with the purple hurt. Okay, at least 
least it went in the right direction. Attempt <clears throat> number four. strong for me, I can't control it. It's probably got like a, a 150 pound pole if you could ever get it to the full butterfly. I designed it for the full butterfly, I know it can handle it, but uh, it just can't. I'm not strong enough to pull it. Okay, on to uh, slingshot number three, and that's the bastardization. Finally, we have the God Slayer. So based on their performance, which I wasn't too fond of, I've done a little, a couple modifications to these things. I've taken this woven pouch off of here because it's way too big and clunky and it just shoots things wildly. So the God Slayer is modified with this little leather pouch, which is also a lot lighter than this thing. Uh, this one, the change that I did is instead of going with the big folded bands, these are just flat shooting bands, pretty much the same width is the arm there. Uh, this one is on modified that was shooting quite well and this thing because it was ridiculously overpowered I've gone from two bands to one. It's like I couldn't even pull the thing. And I've also practiced a little bit so I don't suck quite as much now. So I'll try the old God Slayer out again under its new configuration. digging this one. A lot of fun to shoot. Now for the purple hurt. I'm really liking this one. This band set is really strong and I doubt it's ever going to break. The only problem is it's got such a low fork but I have to make sure I do the flip when I fire and I'm not very good at that yet.
But out of the bunch, I still think this is probably my favorite. So the forks are just high enough that it's easy to shoot, and well, it's freaking badass. I'll try a different camera angle for this one. Looks like I'm down to my last two bottles. I'm gonna have to go get some more beer. Well, at the beginning of the video, I tried uh, skewering this thing with a uh, with an arrow, but uh, I only made it th through as far as the L, and then the arrow kind of glanced off. So let's see if I can finish it off with a slingshot. Well, thank you very much for watching been a fun video to shoot and I hope you enjoyed it just about as much as I have. Um, if you'd like to check out some more uh, slingshot shenanigans, I recommend uh, checking out uh, Herr Jörg Sprav. He's uh, a guru when it comes to slingshots. And this guy made one like the size of a car and it shoots shot footballs. And uh, he also made one that shoots a frigging machete. Uh, yeah, he's a real cool guy. I think he'd... Uh, you can use some more subscribers. And, uh, well, don't uh, forget to rate, subscribe, or comment. Or else. <laughs>